Hello, today for review I've got uh, yet another Inea monitors made by BGVP and model name is DM8. I already reviewed DM6, DM7 and it was a really good and popular models and actually DM8 is not an exception. As you can guess uh, by the name of this model here used 8 balanced armatures and this label on the box uh, hints that here used both Knowles and uh, Sonion receivers and it, they were utilized in order to create uh, well balanced uh, sound. What is fun uh, is, is that uh, this model exists in two versions. One is 3D printed from Acryl and the second one is uh, CNC machined from the stabilized wood and actually stabilized wood version has a special internal chamber for uh, sound tuning and it has a bit different uh, sound signature. I didn't compare them actually, but uh, at least it's stated. And uh, I will add links to the Hi-Fi Go shop in the description, because I've got my model from them. And price is $350 for the regular version and about $370, if I remember right, for, this, for the wood cut version. And let's have a closer look. As you can see, package is nice, it's well designed with interesting uh, oil paint-like uh, texture and uh, with basic specs on the back side 27 ohms of impedance 110 decibels of sensitivity 8 balanced armature drivers if you're interested in uh, what particular drivers used here just visit hi-fi go site uh, they've uh, put a picture with diagram of internals and uh, bgvp uh, st uh, declare mentioned all receivers they are using inside of earphones Inside of outer wrap, as usual, there is a black cardboard box. Nice sense of premium made thing. So, some papers, envelope with uh, warranty card and other stuff. Ear pieces themselves in a special compartment and a different set of tips. You can see that we can pull them out to a pair of forms, tips with color insert, wider boards one, narrower boards one, so big set of tips with a lot of sound tweaking options. Can for storage, nice addition here you will get additional adapters, so Pentacon and 3.5 mm and cleaning tool. And here we'll get the stock cable. In terms of design, they are really good. Let me zoom in a little bit, so here it is. CNC machined, done really nicely, I've got pinkish one, but it still looks uh, pretty good and has a nice design, so level of uh, execution is good, everything is done nice, smoothly with interesting textures, of course all ear pieces are unique and you will get a unique thing. Fit is good, but actually there were some complaints over the internet that boards are short and wide. I didn't get any issues with that, but uh, keep in mind that it's subjective and with other ears probably there could be different outcomes. Unfortunately there is no leap for holding the tips, uh, probably it was not possible using this uh, technology. And you can see that inside of spout there are four boards for different uh, drivers. But uh, currently tips are holding pretty well. I don't know how it will go with time, we'll see that later. Anyway, design is pretty stylish. Here used replaceable cable with MMCX connectors. Stock cable is really good. Silver plated oxygen free copper declared pretty thick, solidly built, really 
high level audiophiliac cable. So here used MMCX connectors. You can see that connectors are pretty big. They clicks tightly in place and holds really well. So I suppose they will be durable. And left one is also holding well. There are ear hooks formed, but of course no memory wire. It's average in terms of softness because you can see that four wires and pretty four pretty thick wires go for each ear piece, but it's uh, pretty comfortable in everyday usage. Big splitter with chin slider, and after the splitter, it goes braided down to the jack. Jack is also pretty big. Here I used the 2.5 millimeter one, so you can use adapters if you want to connect it to Pentacon or to regular 3.5 millimeter socket. BGVP added this adapter to the accessory set. So in terms of presentation, design and all other stuff, earphones are really nice. The only issue is that they don't have that lip for holding the tips, but besides that everything is done almost perfect. And of course about the sound, I gave them 40 hours of burn in, I didn't expect uh, any significant changes and there were no changes in sound, usually balanced armatures uh, doesn't change much uh, during the burn-in process, so if you decide to get uh, DM8, just uh, start listening them and enjoying, no need to spend time. But most probably you'll have to spend some time finding the proper tips and trying different options, because uh, fit is not uh, bad, but it can be a bit complicated. But I'm pretty sure that almost everyone will find the proper tips. I've got these uh, pinkish ones and they providing good fit and isolation for me. When I only started uh, preparation uh, for these reviews, I thought that uh, okay, BGVP will create yet another model that sounds like vast majority of uh, mul Chinese multi-balanced armatures on the market and it will be hard to say something particular about this model. But actually, you know, DM8 appears uh, to be having uh, their own unique and uh, different sound signature. They are on the warmer side of things, but not typically warm like, I don't know, Weston sometimes does warmer type of armatures, Airsonic sometimes creates such tunings, uh, Shozy did uh, some models with that kind of tuning brain waves or brain waves, uh, but uh, BGVP did it in a bit different way with a more boost on the upper mids, giving a bit unusual but uh, pretty pleasant tonality for those who like additional weight. Let's have player on the table to show the examples and let's talk about the sound of this unusual model. I don't know. Uh, is, that, is there a big difference with regular version, because I've read few reviews of uh, acrylic DM8 and they describe totally different sound. Maybe it's a difference of wooden version, I don't know, but anyway I will uh, tell about what I hear with them. Base is boosted, uh, it's uh, boosted about... Uh, uh, accent on the low frequencies is about average, maybe slightly above average, but not big. It's not bass heavy model, first of all, because accent is not huge, and uh, secondly, because uh, it's balanced armatures, and it means uh, that lows here are faster than traditionally for the dynamic drivers, meaning a bit more resolution and a bit more focus on the small nuances and details. Depth is good, not the maximum, but uh, good, and of course low frequencies are controlled really well here. And actually this, this combination of uh, good uh, low resolution and uh, accent gives unusual situation when uh, acoustic instruments sounding really nice, rich, but with added body and a bit uh, bigger in size than, than they are in the real life. But if you like accent at low frequencies, it could be a good option, because uh, here you will get uh, small nuances, overtones and details, and uh, sometimes they are sounding uh, hypernatural, so with accented sense of naturalness. They are okay with electronic music, if you 
you listen it uh, time to time. But probably for the electronic music it's better to get something with dynamic driver with bigger accent. But of course it's a matter of taste. I really like uh, that uh, electronic track that I have in my media library with uh, DM8. But of course it's mainly the matter of subjective preferences. F to my taste they first of all created for the real instruments or acoustic instruments. I'm not sure how to name them properly. So, first example track is Caravan Palace, uh, Rocket for Me. Nice electro swing with a pleasant uh, bass line, but at the same time it's not exaggerated and not uh, pushed forward. So these earphones do a nice job in playing this uh, part with proper amount. And the second track that I use time to time as an example of low frequencies, it's uh, Diablo Swing Orchestra, the Butcher's Bal uh, al album name The Butcher's Ballroom, and the track is Gunpowder Chant. I like that uh, didgeridoo or didgeridoo, not sure about the accent at the beginning, and uh, it's interesting instrument with a lot of resonances in and overtones in the low frequencies, and this earphones delivers it super accented and super engaging. Mids are probably the strongest part here because many people like uh, such combination. Lower mids are a bit recessed uh, in terms of quantity, but at the same time, thanks to the balanced armature nature, they are not shadowed by low frequencies because bass stays in place and mids are played in a technical and engaging manner, but a bit reduced comparing with uh, bass uh, and uh, upper mids are slightly accented, giving a bit more presence for vocals for instruments, especially for female vocals, giving additional sparkle and engagement. engagement. And also they adding a bit of weight on the mid frequency, so if you like uh, uh, more focus on the macro side of things, it's a really good option. They are detailed, but they don't go into the micro contrast, they're not trying to pick the tiniest nuances, and uh, but still small details are present, they're just not pushed forward. Because it's still balanced armature, so good resolution here is present. They are not uh, super critical for the quality of records, but still require something properly recorded and mastered, because they won't uh, boost uh, anything uh, too much, they won't try to smooth issues or something like that. Imaginary stage is uh, slightly above, uh, actually maybe not slightly, just more than slightly, but uh, not hugely above average, and it's typical for the uh, in-ear monitors with polite treble like this model is done, but uh, still it has uh, DM8 has good uh, depth layering and pretty nice width separation. They are not the most spacious one, but of course they are not the most intimate uh, too. And uh, as an example for the mid frequencies, first track is Slania's song by Eluvetai or you know, I should avoid non-English bands, because I don't know how to pronounce their names. A really great uh, combination of uh, medieval folk and heavy metal with a lot of folk instruments, really good uh, catchy tunes, and uh, it's uh, full of small details, distorted guitars, nice vocals, all that stuff requires good and technical mid performance, and this model delivers it nicely. And uh, second example, Europe, the final countdown, the most famous song, maybe consider that, uh, consider Europe as the one song wonder, but actually they have a lot of other great uh, stuff, uh, Cherokee and Kerry and a lot of other tracks. So really, really recommend uh, to anyone who didn't listen anything besides the final countdown, but uh, of course, this one is the most famous and sounds good with these earphones. They adding a bit of weight, making bass guitars and that signature synthesizer riff a bit more forward, but sounding uh, pretty pleasant. And the uh, treble is a bit recessed uh, comparing with average tuning and probably that uh, adding, that's adding a bit more value to this model because we have a lot of uh, V-shaped in-ear monitors and not everyone likes the boosted treble. 
uh, high frequencies here are pretty detailed and they have a slightly above average extension, but at the same time their amount is a bit reduced comparing to upper mids and that giving a pretty comfortable and polite sound signature. Uh, subjectively I prefer much more boosted treble, but uh, if you don't like it, if you treble phobic uh, or treble sensitive, more polite way to say that, uh, you definitely need uh, have to consider this uh, model, because treble here is present and actually it has a good detailization and uh, pretty good attacks and decays. Uh, basic layering, but nice overtone saturation, but it's reduced in terms of quantity and that means more comfortable sounding for many. And uh, first example for the treble is Hiromi Uehara, Blackbird. I really like Hiromi or her music and of course fortepiano requires nice treble performance and this model delivers it. I'm lacking a bit of uh, presence in treble area, but it's matter of preferences here, because in terms of uh, detailization and technical stuff, uh, treble here is nice. And the second track, it's Nguyen Le, uh, jazz covers of Dark Side of the Moon and Us and Them. There are a lot of different instruments here with a lot of overtones going to the treble area and this model plays it nicely. So to summarize once again, a bit warmer sound uh, signature with nice uh, bass, but not overdoing the bass accent with good resolution and with a slightly boosted upper mids and comfortable treble. Nice signature for those who like that. In terms of pairing, they require some uh, neutral player, uh, probably not the best idea to pair them with something warmer sounding. So Fio M11, Ibasu DX160, Shanlinx if you like a bit more uh, 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 accented emotions or Fio M11 Pro and all that other players in this price range. And speaking about the comparisons, to be honest there is not much sense in doing them, for example C Audio L5, they are more natural with less bass and a bit more treble. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Dunu DK2001 uh, in similar price range, they have uh, more energetic representation with more treble and so on. And basically almost all models that I can recall instantly, they will have uh, more forward treble and they can, can have different bass, uh, but it, it's just a different in terms of tuning. So if you need some additional comparisons, just feel free to ask. But actually BGVP DM8, at least this wooden version, has their own sound signature and that makes them unique and interesting. Thank you for your attention, uh, thank you for listening and of course have a nice day.